Welcome to Dr. Surveyor YouTube channel. I am honored to have you subscribe. Follow me and like the video. Thank you very much. Ancient history The space appeared since man built the first buildings, and pre-Christian surveyors planned the monument of Stonehenge, 2500 BC, using peg and rope geometry. And many evidences of the ancient Egyptians' mastery of surveying emerged. Rob Stryker was using the principles of simple geometry to re-establish boundaries after the annual floods of the Nile River and the near-perfect squaring of the Great Pyramid at Giza, built in 2700 BC. Its north-south orientation confirms this, and evidence also emerged indicating the ability of the Mesopotamian civilization in surveying, as this civilization produced in the early 1st millennium BC the Groma tool, which is an ancient surveying tool. The mathematician Lu Hui described methods for measuring distant objects in his book, Haidao Suanjing, or the Sea Island Mathematical Manual published in AD 263. The Romans also recognized surveying as a profession, and made the basic measurements by which the Roman Empire was divided, such as logging, taxation of conquered lands in AD 300. In Europe, specifically in the Middle Ages, boundaries were set around villages and parishes, this was done by forming and planting a group of people residing around them. Or by creating ways to walk around the parish or village, and they were taught and indoctrinated to young children to ensure the continuation of memory for as long as possible, as William the Conqueror in England commissioned preparing the book, The Day of Judgment, in 1086 AD. This book recorded all the names of the landowners along with the area and quality of the land they owned as well as specific information about the contents of the land and its inhabitants, but the book did not include any maps showing specific locations. In the year 1551 AD, the scientist Abel Vollen invented the so-called plane table, which contributed greatly to the development of space but it is believed that his invention is only a development on an invention that already existed. In 1620, the Gunther series was introduced by the English mathematician Edmund Gunther, and this series made it possible to accurately survey and plot plots of land for legal and commercial purposes. Leonard Diggs described the theodolite in his 1571 book, a geometric practice named Pantometra. In the year 1576 AD, the scientist Joshua Habermel invented a theodolite with a compass and a tripod, a mounting base, and Jonathan Sejan was the first to integrate a telescope on a theodolite in 1725 AD. In the 18th century, newer surveying techniques and tools began to be used. In 1787, Jesse Ramsden presented the first accurate theodolite. At that time, theodolite was used to measure angles in the horizontal and vertical planes. Ramsden also invented the so-called Great Theodolite, in which he placed an engine of his own design. The Dutch mathematician Willebrid Senelius, who is also known as Snell van Ruyen, introduced the new systematic use of the method of triangulation triangulation, mathematical geometry. In 1615 AD, the same scientist measured the distance from Alkmaar to Breda, which was about 72 miles, 116.1 kilometers, which is less by 3.5% of the actual distance. The scientist Senelius also showed how the formulas of the equations of the Earth's surface that were dealing with it as a flat surface could be corrected to take into account the curvature of the Earth, and he also showed how to calculate the location of a point inside a triangle using angles and known points. He based his work on the idea of surveying a main network of points and identifying subsidiary points within this main network. 
between 1733 AD and 1740 AD, Jacques Sassini and his son César made the first process of creating a network of points using triangulation in France, and their work contributed to the publication of the first map of France in 1745 AD, which was created with the highest possible accuracy available at that time. Towards the end of the 18th century, point networks were established for most countries using triangulation. In 1784 AD, a team of surveyors led by General William Roy in Great Britain established the point network, and for the first time the Great Theodolite, Ramsden Theodolite, was used. Great Theodolite was involved in this process and was terminated in 1853 AD. The process of surveying and establishing a grid of points began in India in 1801 AD, and the Indian survey had a tremendous scientific impact and a great addition to the science of surveying, as it had the first contribution to the naming and designation of Everest and other peaks. Surveying became a professional job at the beginning of the 19th century with the onset of the Industrial Revolution, and more accurate tools were manufactured to assist in surveying work. Infrastructure projects and industrial projects needed surveyors to lay canals, roads, and railways. In the United States of America, the Land Act of 1785 established a system of general land surveys that formed the basis for dividing land into divisions to allow its sale, and this resolution divided the states into networks of towns that were divided into sections and sections. Napoleon Bonaparte created the first real estate survey in Europe in 1808, where he collected data on the number of plots of land, their value, their uses, and the names of the owners. Space became increasingly important with the arrival of the railroad in the 19th century, as the use of space was necessary to make roads technologically and financially viable. In the 20th century surveyors developed ancient chains and ropes at the beginning of the 20th century but they still faced the problem of accurate measurement of long distances. In the 1950s, Dr. Trevor Lloyd Wadley invented the Tellurometer, a device that measured long distances using a microwave transmitter and two receivers. In the late 50s, the electronic distance measurement was invented, which uses the frequencies of light waves to measure distances. 8, only 1. 9. The great progress that took place in the field of electronics led to the production of smaller units of the electronic distance measuring device, EDM. And in the 70s the first tools that combined the angle and the measured distance appeared and became known as the so-called integrated station devices. Total station and manufacturers gradually developed these devices resulting in improvements in its accuracy and speed of measurement. These developments include recorders of measured data and software for computation of distance and angle on board aircraft. The U.S. Naval Transportation System, U.S. Navy Transit System, is the first satellite positioning system. The first successful operation was launched in 1960 AD, and surveyors found that field receivers could be used to locate a point. The use of large equipment and scattered satellites had many drawbacks, including that they were cumbersome and inaccurate. In 1978, the U.S. Air Force launched the first prototype satellites from the Global Positioning System GPS and GPS uses a larger constellation of satellites and improved transmission signals to give greater accuracy. Obtaining accurate information using GPS, Global Positioning System, required several hours of monitoring by a fixed receiver. Several improvements were made to each of the satellites and receivers, and a new scanning method appeared, known as the Real-Time Kinematic RTK, scan, 
which allowed obtaining high precision measurements using a fixed base station and a second mobile antenna that can be tracked in less time. In the 21st century the theodolite, the total station, and the global positioning system, RTK, GPS have continued to be used, developed and updated. Satellite images continued to improve and became cheaper, allowing their use on a larger scale. Notable new technologies in this century included three-dimensional, 3D, scanning and the use of LIDAR for topographical surveys. Drone technology has also appeared, along with photometric image processing.